Hello, this is Ted Helms of Helms Art Creations, and this video demonstrates how I frame my canvas board paintings. Please enjoy! For materials, you'll need a length of half inch square rod, black paint, opaque paper, two small eye screws, a length of hanging wire, and four silicon bumpers. To build the frame, you should have a pencil, ruler, small saw, sandpaper or sanding disc, paint brushes, a pair of scissors or paper cutter, a glue stick, liquid glue, two plastic clamps, and a wire cutter. My goal is to make the canvas look like it's floating off the wall. To give that effect, I need to attach a standoff frame to the back of the painting. First, I measure the canvas board dimensions, and this one is 8 inches by 8 inches square. To enhance the floating effect, I like to set the standoff frame back from the edge of the painting a little bit. I use half inch square rod for the standoff frame. Each rod is 36 inches long and can be cut into four lengths of 7 and an eighth inches and one 7 and a half inch length. For the shorter lengths, you get a little over an eighth of an inch of setback. The longer length puts the standoff frame right at the edge of the canvas board. Also, I like to prepare the standoff frame pieces in batches. So I usually prepare four rods worth of pieces at a time. This gives me five standoff frames, four short ones and one longer one. And by the way, you could cut the standoff frame lengths even shorter in an effort to enhance the floating effect even more. However, canvas board can warp and using longer lengths of rod helps to minimize or even prevent any warping. Using a pencil, I mark another line on an adjacent side of the rod to help follow while I'm making the cut. My studio is inside my house, so when I'm ready to cut, I put the rod over a trash can so the sawdust ends up in it instead of on the floor. I use a small hacksaw, but anything that will leave you with a fairly clean cut would work. Here I've cut my four 36 inch rods and arranged the pieces in groups of four. The four longer pieces have to go together, but for the 16 shorter pieces, they don't quite end up being exactly the same length, so I try to group them in lengths that are similar as possible. This makes the sanding step a bit easier. Here I'm working to sand the ends flat to make sure that the four frame pieces are the same length. I found using two rubber bands to hold the four pieces together and sanding them all at the same time makes the process much faster. Also, if you have access to a sanding disc or sander, you can make this process incredibly short. If you do use a sanding disc or sander, I recommend wearing a mask and doing the sanding either outside or over a trash can. The flatter the ends and the closer the links are to each other, the better the frame will fit together when attaching it to the canvas. As a finishing step, I make a couple of passes with the pieces on the sandpaper to take the edge off the outside of the stack. This isn't necessary, but can remove any sharpness that might have been created by the sanding process. One other aspect of a floating frame is to paint the standoff. I typically only paint the side and end that will be visible, so I lay out the frame looking for any notches or defects in the wood and make sure that they're not on the visible side of the frame. Usually I make any defective side the side that I'll be attaching to the painting so it won't be visible. Once I've got the frame laid out, I rotate the pieces so the outside of the frame is facing up and the ends that are going to be painted are slightly hanging off the edge of the surface I'm painting on. You can paint the standoff frame any color you like. I chose black because it looks like a shadow behind the painting, again helping with the floating illusion. Also, if you wanted to create a traditional floating frame by attaching the standoff inside a shadow box, painting the standoffs black hides them quite well.
While the standoff frame's drying, I move on to clean up the back of the canvas board. Through my process of painting, the paper covering the back of the board sometimes gets ripped from pulling tape off it. Also, it sometimes gets stained when I add the gloss varnish to protect the painting. So I like to cover the back with a clean sheet of opaque paper. I double check the measurements and then measure and mark the paper to the right lengths. I like the edge of the paper to be covered up by the standoff frame. So the right length for me is about seven and a half inches square. This length works for both the short and the long frame lengths I've already cut. You can use scissors to cut the paper because the edges will be covered by the standoff frame, but I use a paper cutter to make the edges cleaner. I do one rough fit to make sure that the paper was sized properly. Then I use a glue stick to coat the back of the board trying to avoid any glue clumps. I carefully lay the paper down, pushing it from one direction and smoothing it as I go. Once it's down, I rub my fingers over any areas where there are bubbles or bumps. I also check the corners, and if they aren't glued down, I pick them up and add some more glue from the stick. I let the glue dry for a short while, and then it's time to start attaching the frame to the canvas board. First, I note the orientation of the painting, and then I lay out the frame, getting it as close to possible to where I want it finally positioned. Once I've got it in place, I measure down about one third of the height from the top of the painting. In this case, it's about two and a half inches from the top. Then I mark the two sides of the frame and roll the pieces over so I can place a center on the inside face. Once the centers are marked, I put the pieces side by side and use the top frame piece as a spacer to see if the centers are lined up correctly. These centers are where I'm going to add the eye screws to attach the hanging wire from. And by the way, if you're going to mount the standoff frame inside a shadow box, you can skip this step. The wood I use for the frame is relatively soft, so I don't actually need a pilot hole for the screws, but it's a little easier with one. So I use a drill with a bit that's slightly smaller than the screw diameter and only drill in a small amount. After drilling the pilot hole, I erase my pencil marks and put the screws in. As I'm screwing it in, I check to make sure the screw is going in straight in both directions. Since the wood is soft, I can screw the eye screw in with my fingers. But you can also use needle nose pliers to twist it in. I screw it in until only the ring is showing and that it's in line with the long direction of the frame piece. After adding the eye screws, I put the frame back together where I want it to be attached. I get my plastic clamps ready and put a small bead of liquid glue onto one of the frame pieces. Because the frame pieces in the canvas board are light, it doesn't take much glue to attach them. I put the frame piece back into place and adjust it as needed so the frame edges are flush with each other and centered on the back of the canvas board. Then I carefully add the two plastic clamps. The clamps I use are strong enough to move the frame piece if I clamp them too fast, so I slowly put them into position. I only have two clamps, but if you have more, gluing the other sides down now would save you some time. Also, if you put too much glue on, now's the time to wipe it off. I let the glue dry for about 30 minutes before moving on to the next frame piece. Again, after adding the glue and putting the frame piece onto the canvas board, I make sure to adjust it into the correct position. In the interest of time, I've already glued down the third side and am now attaching the final piece. If all the adjustments have gone well, the last piece should fit flush on both ends. If the pieces aren't flush, an added bonus of painting the frame pieces a dark color is that it won't be as noticeable.
I added a bit too much glue and removed it with a toothpick. After the frame is secured to the canvas board, I use some black paint to touch up the visible side of the frame to make sure the black is uniform around the edges. I find the frame seams tend to need the most touch up paint. The last step is to add the hanging wire and some bumpers. I use standard hanging wire rated to support the weight of my painting in the frame. To attach the wire, I pull about an inch and a half or so of it through the eye screw. I fold it over the eye ring and wrap the end around the long section of the wire. Then pull the end back through the eye. This makes a nice loop to lock the wire onto the eye screw. I push the loop as tight as I can around the long side of the wire and the eye screw. Sometimes I use a pair of needle nose pliers to help pull the wire through the ring or to tighten it around the ring. Next I start wrapping the end of the wire around the long side, keeping the wraps nice and tight against each other. This wire is stranded so the ends tend to separate. I keep twisting it to try to keep them tight. Sometimes I'll also use the pliers to pinch the ends of the wires up against itself so they don't poke out. Once one side is done, I hold the loose end of the wire near the other eye screw and pull the wire up in the center until it's one half to three quarters of an inch away from the top of the frame. Then I cut the wire between one and a half and two inches past the eye screw. I follow the same steps as I did with the first eye screw to attach the wire to this one. The last step is to add four silicon bumpers. These help keep the frame off the wall and allow airflow behind the painting, which minimizes any moisture buildup that might occur. Thank you for watching, we appreciate it. If you'd like a print of any of my paintings, they're available along with many other themed gift ideas in our store. The link is in the description along with our other social media sites. We appreciate your feedback, so please leave your comments below. And if you liked the video, click the like button. If you'd like to be notified when we release future videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again, and we hope you have a fantastic day.